Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to South Rock Conversations. I'm Bianca, and this is my sister, Monique, and we're here to chat it up with you. Yes. We've been chatting for a little while. We have been. But it's good. It's been a while since we have. So Again, this morning, but okay. No, 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 but... Okay, in-depth conversations, maybe, maybe things that we don't really talk about because we're constantly... Yeah, we don't get a chance to. Doing them. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like the eye, like, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it's cool to be able to come and sit down and just, you know, chop it up. All right, so what are we going to talk about now? Um, I think it'll be really fun to kind of like dive in a little bit into something we're really versed in, which is real estate. And if you think we're versed in it, I don't we know. We are. <laughs> no, we definitely are. This is what I know. And this is like, uh, in, in, terms in a of weird like way, this is my model. Our I don't know pocket. shit. In terms of our Because every time though. I think I know something, someone comes and pulls the goddamn sheet and I don't know shit again. So, um, no, in terms I of- wouldn't say I'm versed with it. I would say that, me personally, I won't say that I'm versed in it. Uh, I just know, have experience in it. Yeah, but and, experience um, equals knowledge. Yeah, but Girl, every time I think I have knowledge, <laughs> I'm like, oh, and this happened. And I'm like, what? <laughs> well, you know, it just means you were a couple of steps behind. Like yesterday, <laughs> something crazy happened. I can't even talk about it, but I was like, what? <laughs> No, at the end of the day, we have a lot of experience in many years. And what could be verse to you doesn't mean that it's verse to me. It could be, you know. I've never heard the word verse, like, spoken in that, like, uh, if it's verse to you, it doesn't mean it's verse to me. But anyway. But, you know, the, know it, it's such a broad topic. All right, so let's talk and about... so many different... Like, no, we are not experts from A to Z. No, but there's so many different avenues that you within real estate that you can go into that people don't sometimes don't even realize. So yeah. People kind of think, like, brokers or agents, you know? And, like, yeah. that's where it starts and ends and landlords. But there's so many other, you know, which branches is, to it. Which is where we... Uh, yeah, we're on a branch. We're, we're, we're a little branch. <laughs> we're a little branch. <laughs> and we know our branch. And we do. And that's okay. We should know our branch. I, I just, I'm always cautious when I say that. Well, Me, because, <laughs> and then that happens. And anyway, well, I'm just going to say I have experience. Um, I've but been that's doing this for over 20 branches. years. And um, it hasn't been 20. Yeah, over 20 years. And I've seen a lot. Uh, and I've done real estate in two different places. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, the word say, that too is weird. Done real estate. No, I've worked in real estate m- management in two separate places. Una in Puerto Rico, la otra in, in New York. Mm-hmm. Specifically in Manhattan, the Bronx, and Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. In Puerto Rico, Fajardo, eh, Macao, <laughs> y San Juan. And in the last five, six years, I really practiced property management at its fullest. Um, I, well, in New York too. Yeah, (laughs) just a different location, which are two completely different worlds, but it, they are, but they're not. Well, I would say they, they, well, the the core is the same. The core, you know, yes, is the same, but your audience is different. Your, your client is different. Your clientele, your product is different. To a degree, well, in terms of what we do, yes, in Puerto Rico, it's different than what we do in New York, but at the core, it's the same. Now, what do you think is the difference between uh, real estate as a, a trade in New York and Puerto Rico? Well, being that I mainly focus in New York at the moment, um, well, what we do, like I said, is different. Well, in New York, we are more residential base and we give homes, you know, we, we provide homes to people and we make sure that they're, we, we do a different part of the life. It's like over there, we make sure your house is good. And then over here, we make sure your fun is good. And then your work is good. You know, like it's a different product that we're giving. Um, but I mean, New York, New York is hard. New York is hard. New York property managing in New York. It is duro. 
It's very, and every day it's a different battle, a battle that you don't know that you're gonna face, the unknown battle. And it's not like a, a, I would say managing in New York, it's a lot of responsibility. Uh, We don't, I always looked at it in terms of like, we have to make sure that we keep people safe. Safe, yeah, for sure. And um, for sure, in a in a a place where we really have no control of how many people live in a unit or mm-hmm. what they're using the unit for or um, who's going in that you know it's very difficult. It's very difficult. But it is a very hard job. But somebody got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's tough, you know. And and but as a profession, how do you feel that it's different in terms of the two different places oh take out the most obvious element which is the environment you know the environment is different when you know i think like we touched on new york previously and sometimes it just does look gray you know you got to get out of that mindset so you can have a productive work day and not just go to a place, I mean, New York is beautiful and it has things that no other place in the world has and you have to kind of remind yourself, I'm in New York City, you know? Yeah. And there's no other place like it. And, but who doesn't want to work with palm trees everywhere? And you know, like it just changes your attitude and changes your, your productivity to me, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think over there, it's just adds like, sometimes you got to go out and it's, seven degrees outside Mm -hmm. you know sometimes you know you gotta it's gonna snow you gotta make sure everybody has their salt and if you gotta be the one to make sure that everybody's safe that you know so I think it's just to add it it, it, you know I think the environment just adds another layer of just difficulty besides just real estate in New York nowadays it's, it's tough it's tough you have a whole bunch of rules that you have to adhere to you have a whole bunch of well that you didn't have to adhere to before right that you know, and they, there's something new every day that you have to make sure that you're up to date with um so like i said it's a lot of responsibility that i mean i don't know if it's everywhere else mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that but i know that over there it's just it's you know you got to make sure that you're made for it when i started managing in new york i'm trying to go back i i clearly remember well i was very you know i was 17 18 when I was property managing and when I when I say property managing like I was visiting sites and uh, I you know I, I know exactly where I started I know exactly where the first building was but I also remember of always finding comfort in that we managed a specific building because I knew we were doing it with a different type of love and not necessarily, of course I was looking at the bottom line, but that in our path, we realized that the better we do our job, most likely people will be more appreciative of it. No, for sure. Uh, that doesn't always happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it helped me find purpose. Mm-hmm in a career that I would have not necessarily had chosen, Mm -hmm. but I was grateful for the opportunity. Yeah. So, but not only that, I mean, because as property managers and as owners, everybody has a different, um, but like, at least what I've learned is that um, not only doing those things, but also connecting, like, you know, as property managers, some everybody has a different, way that they do their things and some may just you know make sure that their rent is collected and make sure just do the bare minimum opposed to actually talking to your tenants and relating and and i think that got in trouble for that a lot been a big difference though yeah. because you do care and that shows that you do care opposed to hey it's the second of the month <laughs> you know like you know, just which is the, more the, human. But that's the human the, connection. The, the stereotype. Exactly. Of exactly. Someone that does this um, exactly. for a living. Which that really has But been. I did have a bad reputation for sometimes getting a little bit too... Uh, friendly? Friendly with the guests, with the tenants in terms of like, 
very I, understanding. They saw, I saw them. <laughs> they saw me grow up. Yeah. So how dare I? Yeah, you yeah. know, not understand that. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're gonna be two months late. Yeah. Or you know, but just yeah. But I was always empathetic because somewhere in my journey, I was in a place where I didn't have funds for rent. Somewhere in my personal journey, mm -hmm. I was in a space where we were evicted from a space. Mm -hmm. And I know that feeling yeah, as a child. Compassion. I couldn't even imagine as a parent. And then how do you work through that? Yeah. Uh, you never forget those things. Mm -hmm. You never forget that sticker on that door. Mm -hmm. So which goes back to you know our humble beginnings, and if you don't go, like it's hard to relate to those to people, the people that you're servicing, depending on what your business is. If you haven't done it yourself, if you haven't gone through it yourself, or if you have this idea of how the world works, when yeah, sometimes it doesn't. And empathy and real estate, and well, specifically uh, property management. I get it. For the bottom line is definitely, you know something difficult. Do you think that has to do with being a woman? No. No? No, because I know people all around me that we were also in the same, you know, uh, a boat and the, the empathy, no. I, I've seen men also remember how their parents felt and that pushes them to mm -hmm. do uh, better. Uh, my situation was a little bit different, but I don't think the empathy part had to do with being a woman. It was just a situation that a lot of us went through at a certain point in life, right? Because we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just me. It was this one. So in that journey, I also met and I know a lot of people that went through it. And that still is like a stinger to this yeah. day. And um, but I will say that is not in the in the, the traditional sense of being a property manager. That's not something that is like when you're going down the, mm -hmm. down the, yeah, the yeah. requirements <laughs> when you get the job, you're like, uh, have you ever gotten evicted? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, you can't have the job because then you I can see how yeah, that yeah. like <laughs> Like, but, what would you but do it helped if? Us. Yeah, you. it helped us. I really care for a, a lot of the people that I've had along the way um, be part of our communities. Yeah, I know. And um, and you can just see, like, I have tenants all the time that you know now my position is a little bit different. So that like one on one contact, I, I you know, I just the position doesn't lend itself to that as much. But there's some that you know they always call for me and just to talk or drop How things about off. They, they never ask for me anymore. Well, uh, I left a, a long time ago, but... Um, no, but every... Some of them do. But, because, you know, you... You may still yeah, like, make that... This is the difficult sister. Put the nice one on. <laughs> <laughs> um, some, but... Some don't. Some, you know, they... They look for you. And just to... Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah. And it's like, you got to take out those five minutes and talk to them. Yeah. And, you know... Because you're human. You're human and... You care, and they care. They care even more that you care, and you're not. They're not just a number. Now, because nobody wants to be felt that. In, in in real, you you brought up being a woman in this, you know, uh, which in real estate, for the most part, my experience, it's a male dominated. Oh, for sure. Uh, there's a lot of women uh, selling real estate, mm -hmm. um, but that I've in, come across. In our branch, <laughs> but uh, property management as well. Um, a lot of female, but property management um, directors or bosses, mm -hmm. um, construction, you know, uh, I don't see a lot of that. Or a lot of people that I have had are positions. I don't see a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, property management. Yes, real estate agents. Mm -hmm. Not contractors and not directors of large portfolios. Portfolios. Right. Um... How do you feel like, do you feel that that affects us and, and, and what we do, how does that change the trajectory? 
Um, I think it's different from me and you, only because of our age. I think that in terms of, it definitely is a challenge for certain things. But I think that in terms of our, I think that my gener- my generation starts, we're Gen- in the same generation. No, no, no. no but in the 80s. we have, but there's a big difference. So there, I think that we we start more gender equality. So when I'm growing up, I'm not thinking. It's not on the forefront for the most part. When you get in the real world, yeah, the man is with this, and you're supposed to do X, Y, and Z. But it's not so much. I feel like depending on your age. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying in general. Depending on people, age, my generation. <laughs> you know, you give from a very young age. You're taught that as a girl, you do this, this, and that. As a boy, you do this and that. So I grew. Up, I don't. When I don't remember growing up and feeling like I couldn't conquer the world because I was a girl. I did. This is what I'm saying. So now, I was told I, I work, but this is, exactly. So I, I don't. You know, now, obviously, as as you know. A director and so you never director. felt that that no, I limited have. you. I no, I have because certain people have made it more difficult, and it's obvious that because you're a woman, automatically, like one, do you even know what you're doing? Like, why are you here? But I never, you don't know anything. Yeah, but I don't feel like for me it was ever. It's like, listen, this is what it is. Like, do you have the answers or not? <laughs> like, it, it had to be like, it wasn't like if something didn't happen or go how I expected it, my, for me, my first thought wasn't like, oh, it's because you're a woman. I had to really think about it. Like, oh, wow. Like, really? Because I'm a woman? Like, it, was, it wasn't like my first thought. Well, it, it, for me, it was always my first thought because I grew up with a gang. But this is, the, and it was I'm, a boy what gang. I'm saying. That and is. I was the only girl in that boy gang. That gang is called the Ana Santana gang mm-hmm. from Bedford Park. And I was the only girl in the gang and I was excluded a lot. <laughs> uh, so from very early on, also my, my, my father was very traditional. Our father was very traditional. No, yeah, he was. In roles, like roles were uh-huh. very... Da, da, da. But then he got two girls that to this day he fights it. And said, bruh, it is what it is. We're here to stay. <laughs> Deal with it, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, um, like, like, you told me the other day, he was like, when we were talking about the baby, he was like, yeah, I thought I thought my first ones were going to be a boy. He tells <laughs> me all the time. Like, like, bro, like, I'm 42. We're get here. Over it. Like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> he tells me even the name he wanted to name me. That, that's taking it overboard. <laughs> But then years later, he's like, this is it. And then it's like, ta-da! <laughs> like, that didn't work out for you. Get over it. But he hasn't gotten over it. He has not. <laughs> I I don't know if it's a generation. Well, some things are generational. But, but no, but that's... But I had a, a best friend. My first best friend ever was a boy. Mi-tong. And we were... Bintong. And we were the best friends. And whatever well, he did, I did. And children, whatever... And you don't he pick did. up the phone. <laughs> so if you see him out there, tell him I'm looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> but so I don't know I don't know if that what do you how do you feel do you feel like it's hindered you <laughs> in real estate yes um yes I've been in like I've been in so many uncomfortable spaces right where quite frankly I was in one I would say maybe a year ago or maybe two I don't know where I was this close mm-hmm. to punching somebody in the face <laughs> Like, it was disgusting. Yeah. And how sexist. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's something that we, we like, mm-hmm. swallow. But it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm not saying that it, it, it and, happened. And, and, but, but because I can't speak the way I want to speak, now, let's, not, uh, let's just say that space, but in many other spaces, mm-hmm. because I felt intimidated or mm-hmm. I'm not the... Uh, or, or th- like, there's only certain tasks that I can be yeah. given. It took me a while to understand that, no, I'm more than capable. Mm-hmm. I'm more than, uh, you know, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. So it took me a little bit longer versus if I was, I feel like if I was a boy, I would have just had it. Or it would have oh, been kind of given. Oh, for sure. For, oh, that is so the, that, that's sure. where I'm like, and I'm also learning how to approach this, not in a male, female way. 
Because mm-hmm. that's what we've been taught. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to... Uh, I've been miseducated. Me, I miseducated myself, really. And uh, I'm trying to regress from that and learn how to handle it in a... It, it just just approach it differently. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not sitting on the same table um, like that. And that's going to take me time because I just started that journey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have all the facts and all the tools that I'm going to do. However. But that's a step. It is Being a able step to, acknowledge to it recognize and, yeah. that I'm not going into this the way I have previously. No, for sure. And obviously... I'm, I mean, as we know, like as we mentioned earlier, it is a male-dominated industry, and there is unfortunately there is sexism, and it's just how you deal with it, because it's not going away right now. Well, but at yeah. the end of the day, we're women and we're strong, and we deserve to be at the table. Yeah. And like it or not, we here. Well, thank you, Blanca. Thank you. We shall talk again about this, and we shall keep on going into something that. She feels that we know a lot about. Which is <laughs> our, branch, our branch. Our branch. Our branch. Our little, our little branch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye.